Hi, this is Meghnad. Welcome back. In this module, we talk about switch case and how to use switch case and we'll see what is a syntax for writing switch case with a simple example. So let's get started. Now I just opened Eclipse IDE. So we have the code that's written in uh, the previous lesson. So what I'll do now is, since this is lesson, fifth, lesson 17, so what I'll do now is I'll close the project that is created in the previous uh, lecture. So right click on this and uh, here in the in the project explorer so what I'm doing now is right click on this I'm clicking on close project now now we have closed all the projects you can see here so all the projects are closed so this indicates that the previous projects are closed make sure that when you're working on a project in Eclipse IDE it's always a good practice to close all the previous projects that you have worked on only one project if it is open it's good all the times now now I'll create file new Java project file new project I'll select here Java project, click next. And since it's lesson 17, so I'll be writing here lesson 17 project. Now click on next and module info.java I don't want, so let me click on finish. Now I'll just open the perspective of Java project. Now you can see here that folder is open. So whenever project, whichever project is open, so that folder will look something like this. Now what we'll do is let me expand this project which is open and expand the SRC we don't have anything in. So right click on this we used to create first a package, new package. And package name starts with lowercase as we already know it. So lesson 17 package. Some name we have to give so I'm giving now. Now inside that we used to create a class. Right click on this new class and I write here lesson 17. And I want main method click on this and click on finish. Now the first thing that we used to do is enter and enter and delete the space here. Delete and delete the space here. We're done. Now I just want to delete the comments that we already have. Let me delete this. Now to understand switch case what we'll do is I'll take an example something like this. Let me open notepad. So I have a requirement like this there read number from user read number from user and if it is one print as one if it is two print as two if it is three print as three and if it is four print as invalid or anything above four four are above I want to print four are above so if the input is four are above number I want to give it as invalid so which we have learned a similar program we have written in uh, uh, when we learned about if else conditions in lesson 14, right? So what I'll do now is I'll quickly write this because we already learned in lesson 14. So I'll write this program and then we will compare with switch case. So now what we have done here, so I have, I'll write like this int n is equal to, I'm writing some value, um, valid value three. And here what I have to do now, I have to write here if, if n is equal to one, We'll be using else uh, uh, sys4 control space and I'll write here one and then what we have to write else if else if n is equal to two I have to write here sys4 control space of two and and then I have to write else if n is equal to three I have to write SYS for control space of three. And then what I have to write else SYS for of I have to write invalid. So this is good. So when n value is one, it'll it'll just print one and it'll just come out of this and it'll come out of here. It'll not check under the conditions if this condition is satisfied. Or if that's not satisfied, it'll check this one. If this is not satisfied, it'll check this. And if this is satisfied, it'll just come out of this. So this is good. But the problem with this is now if n is 3, it will check this one and this one and then it will check uh, this one and if it is, since it is satisfied, it will come outside. Now let's try to debug this. We have learned how to debug uh, Java code in lesson 15, but I'll just quickly show you how the code flow happens using debugging. So all we have to do is we just need to put a breakpoint here. So double click or just double click here and that will add a breakpoint. You can see here. Uh, it just added a breakpoint in line 9. I just want to put breakpoint corresponding to this line. And how to debug this code? Debugging will help you to see how the code flow happens. Now when I go to run and here I have to select debug. 
Java application. I had to select debug as Java application. Now click OK. Now it will ask me to open the debug perspective. Anyway, switch to switch. Okay, now it just came for this line. Now, if everyone remembers the shortcut that uh, the button that we have to press is F6, right? So now let me press F6 and see how to debug the code now. I'm just holding uh, Fn and F6. Now, first it's checking for n equal to one. It's not satisfied. Again, it's checking for two. It's not. It's not satisfied. Now it's checking for three and it is satisfied it's printing three and that's it it came to the end of this so that's how so it's checking one it's checking two it's checking three and since it's satisfied it just printed and it came out now the same code using a switch code switch case it'll directly jump to the, the respective case if you write switch case which is better right let's see how to do that now now what i'll do is i'll modify this code using a switch case and let's see how it works now I'm writing here. Now I'll write S W I S W I T C H. Now uh, see here now. I'll just write tab. Now let me put this. Uh, now, now what we have to do is I have to write here in brackets what I what I need to send yen. Now enter. Now I have to write case. Now let's try to see this. Now let me delete this. Yeah. Case. Now when n value is 1, I have to print this. So let me put like this. Control X and put it here. And then I have to put here break. Now, and then what I have to write here, case 2. So case 2. So when it is 2, what I have to print out, I have to print system.out.println and this one. So now let's put here. And I'll tell you why we have to put break as well. So, and then I need case three. So let me, uh, when when it is three, I have to print this, control X. Control X will cut it. And now here I have to write case three, colon, control V. And then I have to write here break. And last one I have to write default. When no other condition, when any, any of the above condition is not satisfied, I have to write SYS uh, default. And now I'm writing invalid. Now, I don't have to write break for the last one, but anyway, let me delete all this and let's see if it works or not. Now, now what we did, we just removed the if else condition and we have written a switch case. So when what happens in switch case is when n value is three, uh, sorry, when n value is three, directly it will jump to case three. So it will not even compare case one if it is satisfied or if it is satisfied like how it works in if else condition. Now, now let's try to put a breakpoint and try to understand how the code flow happens for a switch case. So what I'll do now is I'll just put a breakpoint at line nine. How to put a breakpoint? Just double click on this. The purpose of doing this is just to understand how the code flow happens, right? Now how to debug this code? So let me stop the previous debugging, terminate the previous one. I just clicked on terminate. Now the previous debugging is stopped. Now what I have to do now is let's go to run and select the debug option. Now click OK. Now the breakpoint will come and hit a uh, stop at the line number nine. You can see the green highlight here. Now what I have to do now is F6 once again. So let me uh, press F6 and see how it really works. Now n value is three. I'm pressing F6. It directly came to case three and it went to the next line break and it's done. So unlike the previous, uh, how it worked previously, it, it checked one, it checked two, it checked three, and then if it's satisfied, it'll go, it's, it's going out. But in this case of switch case, it's directly going to the switch uh, case three. So that's the reason why switch case is far better than if else if conditions, if you have more if else conditions. So if you have one or two cases, if else if else is good, but if you have more than three, then definitely go for switch case because performance wise, it'll directly jump to the respective case and why we have to use break let's try to understand now now what is the use of break is now let's take uh, n value is one now i gave n value is one so now i'll stop this uh, previous debugging now see what happens when n value is one so now again um, let's put a breakpoint um, already is there now let's see what how it works run and debug and click ok 
now I'm debugging it so n value is 1 so let's see what happens now when I uh, um, now I'm trying to press f6 now fn f6 now it just came to case 1 and it is satisfied and it'll break and it'll come outside the outside the switch case so it's all good now what I'll do now is let me stop the debugging and now let me delete this break and see what happens when I delete the break now I just removed the break after case 1 so now let's uh, stop the terminated, yeah, previous um, debug is stopped. Now let's run the code, uh, let's debug the code and see what happens now. Go to run and debug. Now click OK. Now uh, as usual the project stopped at uh, line 9 because of its uh, breakpoint. Now what I have to do now, I have to press F6 now. So let me press Fn and F6. It came to case 1 and there is no break now. It just printed 1 and again it's printing 2. So it's not stopping there. So if you don't have a break statement after a case, it'll go, it'll fall through the next one. And now you have a break, so it'll come outside. So, so that's the reason why it's always good to put a break statement so that it'll not fall through the next case. So break is used to stop the switch case when any condition is satisfied. So if you don't put a break in switch case, it'll fall through the next cases and it'll continue proceeding until it exits, until it sees a break. So. So in this case, since I didn't put a break for after one, it just came to the next one. Okay. So so now what we will do is now uh, what we'll do is let's see the general syntax for switch case. I hope you are clear with how to write a switch case. And now we'll see the general syntax for a switch case, and we'll go to the next module. So let's see the general syntax. Now we can see here this is a general syntax for a switch case. So all you have to do is switch and then put the variable here. And based on the value of this variable, whichever satisfies, it'll execute the statements. And we have to put a break so that it'll, it'll break and go outside the switch case. So for every case, we are writing here break statement. And if you don't have, so you don't have to put for the last one because if it goes to the default, so anyway, it's the last statement, you don't have to put break because after executing this, it'll come outside simply. Now, now we have seen it for a number in case if it is string, etc. you have to, um, put double quotes. Um, now let's see a simple example. Now I just came back to Eclipse ID now. So since it's a number, we just put directly one, two, three, four like this. In case if it's a string value, if this is a string, here you have to put double quotes. And here you have to put double quotes because for string it requires double quotes. Okay. So I hope you are clear with how to write a uh, switch case uh, and how switch case is better when compared to uh, if else if else if condition when you have many cases because which case directly jumps to the respective case right and I hope you're clear why we have to use break statement to come out of the switch case we're going to talk about break statement later more in detail but for now that's what we discuss okay so I hope you're clear with this switch case see you in the next module thank you